to go. Now, what we have here is a drawing that was drawn by Lipus Levi. It first appeared in his book, Transcendental Magic. Uh, Mr. Levi was the fellow that drew the Baphomet, and he is one of the premier black magicians of all time. And this is in the cover, inside cover of Transcendental Magic. This is explained as White Jehovah, Black Jehovah. It represents their dualistic nature of God. And you can see on the top, we have the kindly looking ancient. Well, he ain't too kind of looking, but we have a white, white face and a black <laughs> face. And around it, we've got the hexagram, which many times we've told you is one of the most powerful uh, occult talismans. And part of the hexagram is white, part is black. This represents Luciferian dualism, we'll, w which they believe that God is both good and evil at the same time they believe that the devil is just god being bad that's really what they believe and the the, the snake swallowing it's a tail that's surrounding this um the oh uh, boy i just gotta say it these demonic perbs explain this as the holy ghost once again the blasphemy of the holy ghost is just uh, I tell you what, it takes my breath away to think the depth of evil these people have gone to. Now, we're going, we've shown you this for a reason, because we're going to show you the connections with Freemasonry, the raising of the Kundalini power, how that this has been, uh, these Luciferian Freemasons, you're going to really understand what they're talking about, and the part that it plays in the entire Illuminati agenda. Now, this book here, Bridge to Light, and I have an old edition here. I got the one with the little rainbow bridge and crossing the river sticks and all. I got a cool, I got one of the old school ones. But I want to read here on page um, 252. And you see here in my, on my book, 252, they reproduced this symbol that came from Elisaph's Levy, Transcendental Magic. And they quote Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma. And the explanation of this symbol explains Albert Pike's understanding and interpretation of this symbol. And he, it says here in this book, Bridge to Light, quoting Pike, page 278, Morals and Dogma, the serpent, the Phoenicians, Phoenicians deemed to be immortal, becoming young by entering into and consuming himself, hence the serpent in a circle holding its tail in its mouth, was an emblem of eternity. On page 734, he says this, there is a life principle of the world, a universal agent. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about the aether. Another word for the aether. A life principle of the world, a universal agent, wherein two natures and a double current of love and wrath. It is a ray detached from the glory of the sun. It is the body of the Holy Spirit blasphemy blasphemy albert pike this book bridge to light a lifeless levi they are calling that snake eating its tail of the holy ghost now i tell you what freemasons this book is published by the supreme council of the scottish right how do you think it's going to wash with you when you have promoted blasphemy of the holy ghost and supported that well i don't believe in that our lodge don't do that you think that's going to wash on judgment day when you support this demonic blasphemy you need to get real and get out of that if you have one ounce of the fear of god in your body you need to run out of that demonic mess as fast as your little feet will take you and if you don't just shut your mouth of ever professing you know in any way the living God, because you're phony and you're a liar, it gets worse. It gets worse. Now, this book, Bridge to Light, it quotes morals and dogma on what that means. Where did Albert Pike get it? He got it right from a book of black magic by Eliphas Levi. Now let's read, there's a statement in The Mysteries of Magic by Eliphas Levi that Albert Pike didn't quote. And okay, I need morals and dogma first, don't John? Okay. Yeah. 
All right, I'll read my little quote here from Little Albert. And just while you're looking for that, I, I would say to any of you that are listening that are Freemasons, you know, I, I really urge you to think about what you've done. You know, first off, you're taking an oath with an organization that you don't even know what you're getting into. They can't tell you. You're taking a lifelong oath, an oath, you know, a, by a death oath, getting into these organizations. And um, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, I was going to join the Freemasons as one of the reasons that I study this stuff and stuff like that because I, I thought, you know, I'm going to join the Freemasons. They seem like a legitimate organization. They seem to have mm -hmm. their ducks in a row, presidents, high level people. All of these people were a part of this. Even my uncle was a uh, high level Knights Templar, Scottish Rite, potentate of the shrine. And I'm thinking, you know, this is where this is where I need to go. Well, you know, not being able to when, once I inc inquired and was like, okay, so what is this oath that, what does this ritual look like that I'm going to be doing in order to get in? When they didn't tell me, I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to jump into something that I have no idea what it is, pledge my oath to people that I don't even know who they are. So, because some of the people that I knew that were in the Freemasons weren't very good people, let's put it that way. So, mm -hmm. me linking myself with that, if you're in it, definitely do yourself a favor and jump out of it because you're tying yourself spiritually to all of those people. And if it, all of the stuff David's not presenting enough tonight, that should be enough as well. Absolutely. And you know, people can do what they want to do. You can go put stick beans up your nose if you want to. But I am sick to my gut. I got a belly full of people trying to put a happy face on this like it's something of God. That is absolutely absurd. Now, let's read what Mr. Pike says. Now, this is just going to get more and more interesting. This is in Morals and Dogma. And he says here, there is in nature, this is on page 734, there is in nature one most potent force by means whereof a single man who could possess himself of it and should know how to direct it could revolutionize and change the face of the world. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about the aether. These are the same things that were quested after uh, in the 40s and the 30s by Germany. This is the same thing that was understood uh, in the ancient Vedic text that uh, used it uh, scientifically to build their Vimana flying machines. Let's read on. He says, this force was known to the ancients, you know, and here again, they make the understanding that this force was known to the ancients, just like they said Simon Magnus did what he did by manipulating these primal force. He said, this force was known to the agents, ancients. It is a universal agent whose supreme law is equilibrium, and whereby, if science can but learn how to control it, it will be possible to change the order of the seasons, to produce in night the phenomena of day, to send a thought in an instant around the world, to heal or slay at a distance, or to give our words universal success and to make them reverberate everywhere. The, this agent primarily revealed by the blind guesses of the disciples of Mesmer. Okay, let's talk about Mesmer, Albert. And he's saying that what Mesmer was doing was the same thing that these ancients were doing, these ancient magical adepts. He said the, the what, let me start at the top of the paragraph, this agent partially revealed by the blind guesses of the disciples of Mesmer is precisely what the adepts of the Middle Ages called the elementary matter of the great work. There's another name for the aether. The Gnostics held that it composed the ingenious body of the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy, blasphemy, Gnostic blasphemy, satanic, rank, Gnostic, evil. There's not adjectives enough to express how blasphemous and wicked that is. And it was adorned in the secret rites of the Sabbath or the temple under the hieroglyphic figure of Baphomet or the hermaphroditic goat of Mendes. Now we're going to pick up the part that we saw quoted in Bridge to Light, and then we're going to see a little sentence added on. 
Let's see what they didn't put in. There is a life principle in the world, a universal agent, wherein are two natures and a double current of love and wrath. This ambient fluid, there we go, this ambient fluid penetrates everything. We know what they're talking about now. It is a ray detached from the glory of the sun and fixed by the weight of the atmosphere and the central attraction. It is the body of the Holy Spirit, the universal agent, the serpent devouring its own tail. Wait for it with this electromagnetic aether, this vital and luminous caloric, the ancients and the alchemists were familiar. Mm. It is the electromatic and occult manipulation of the aether, which these occultists have sought for. It is the, uh, the philosopher's stone of the alchemists. It's the holy grail of the grail legends. This Many for many, many years, just like Pike said, if we can master this, we can do anything. It's just like the rebuilding of the Tower of the Babel to be able to control this force. They think they can literally be gods themselves and literally even defeat Jesus Christ when he comes back to this earth. Yeah, and, and like you said earlier, it is them calling it the Holy Spirit when they clearly depict it as a serpent. Um, I mean, if you've read the Bible, we know that the serpent's the bad guy. Of course, like you said, David, Gnostics um, flip that story upside down, uh, claiming that the God of the Bible is actually the evil one. You know, we've read in, in, read in the text, Nag Hammadi, etc., that they called him Yaldabaoth. He was, he was, the reason he was bad is because he said that yeah. there's no other beside me. And we see clearly that quoted in the scripture. So you can't believe both. You really can't. You, can, you can't believe that the Holy Spirit's a serpent, and you can't believe that the God of the Bible is evil and believe the Bible at the same time. And that's ultimately kind of what it boils down to on what you believe. That's exactly what they believe. There was one of these writers said um, that the Trinity was the Father, Son, and Barbello. Yeah, boy. You, you don't have to be the sharpest knife in the door to figure out. And it's not just like it's wrong. I mean, it's so wrong. It's evil pit of hell wrong. Oh, yeah. It's so sketchy, man, because you're going to bring up a verse here in a little bit, but we might as well say it. I mean, that's the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy yeah. against the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and read it, John. Go ahead okay, and pop up there and read that scripture. There it is. Read, read it. it. Here we go. Yeah, so in Matthew chapter 12. Uh, 31 and 32 and they were this is in reference to Jesus was doing miracles and they said that he's doing it of the power of Beelzebub so here we go um, wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men and whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world and neither in the world to come. So like being so flippant with calling the Holy Spirit this and, and depicting it as a serpent and calling it a Barbello and calling it all these different things, anything. I'm, I mean, I'm scared to say anything about the Holy Spirit other than its power and, and beauty and majesty. That's that's all I'm willing to say about it. And that's, that's about as far as I'm willing to go. So to be so flippant as to depict it as a serpent, that that to me is very scary. I mean, that, that's that's somebody that's, in my opinion, trying to go trying to go to hell and trying to be not forgiven and then trying to lead a lot of other people to be unforgiven as well with their literature that's what i see and it is evil it is an evil thing to do they're trapping people trapping their spirit they absolutely are amen now we'll read we'll 